The reading is from Exodus chapter 16, reading verses 2 to 4 and 9 to 15. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them whether they will follow my instructions or not. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked towards the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites, Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Greetings. This is Reed Chudley. I'm pleased to be worshiping with you this Sunday, August 1st. I was reading an article online called Why the Past Always Seems Happier Than the Present, written by Art Markham, a PhD. I was drawn to it by questions that came to mind when reading our Old Testament passage for this morning. The passage is familiar, I think, to most of us. The Israelites have been set free from slavery, yet somehow they want to go back. The future seems uncertain. This causes anxiety and a desire to return to Egypt and their former lives. Horrors experienced there, such as having their firstborn children taken from them, 
and intense and escalating workloads, such as having to harvest their own straw to make the bricks, instead of having the straw provided for them in their construction, all these things seem to have been forgotten, and a desire to return to full pots of stew with a side of bread seems preferable, even in these circumstances. Why does the past seem better? In his article, Dr. Markham suggests that the first reason that the past seems better is that over time, it isn't just our memories that fade. It is our emotions, or perhaps the best way to think of it is that our emotional memory fades as well. The past, therefore, seems to be more moderate, emotionally speaking. I also wonder if perhaps we also don't remember most of the incidents that nagged us or tested us in the past. In a sense, the past, in terms of our emotional memory anyway, may seem to be washed in a golden glow of forgotten annoyances. Dr. Markham also suggests that we go forward in life, that as we go forward in life, we of course gain experience. And it is against experience, cumulative experience, that we judge certain events. For example, perhaps you saw a movie or a concert in your youth, and you thought then, that was an amazing show. That judgment in that time is made against your accumulated experience from your life at that time, and only that time. Meaning that if you saw the exact, exact same movie today and judged it against your current accumulated experience, it might not be as amazing. Could it be that the movie Star Wars isn't as good as I think it is? It's horrible to think. Dr. Markham suggests that the main underlying factor is that we know now how things turned out, which is a great comfort. The present day is yesterday's future, and we're here, so the past seems controllable, and therefore so much safer. While rationally we know that events were just as uncontrollable and just as uncertain then, we know how things turned out, at least until today. I think this passage from Exodus is telling us that while the past is certain, it gives us no opportunities. Only the present gives us opportunities to grow and explore and experience. Our faith needs a present as well as a past. We need a present faith in order to grow into a greater faith than we have ever experienced in the past. It's risky, but here and now is where opportunity exists. It's risky, I know, but this is faith. Faith is our spiritual guide to growing into the future blessings of God. And wait, isn't this what the past has already taught us? Remember that the past has brought us this far, and all that is keeping us from calling these todays, the good old days, is time and a little adventure. Thanks be to God.